Hello, all my inquisitive weasels. Welcome back to Let's Ask the Weasel. This is the second episode ever, and I've got to say that this show has already been an outstanding success because I've already received enough questions to fill the second episode. I hope. If not, we will have to resort to using the internet again. <laughs> the internet. That's so 2000s. Who still uses that thing, right? Am I right? Huh? Huh? Anyone? Huh? All right then. So, a few of the questions actually relate to each other. There's this one from Capuccio. What makes you want to make YouTube? And then there is this one from Yao 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 Ya Yo 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 Joe's quickly lying over the AO Monterio. He asks, "When did you start YouTube and why?" And first of all, I've just got to say thanks to these two users for their very enlightening questions, because it's not many people who knows that it was me who actually made YouTube. I started it back in the 60s in a cave just north of Sarajevo. Back then, of course, I didn't call it YouTube. I called it something else, and it worked by people shooting videos and movies, which they then sent to me, where after I would rate them and write comments, which I would then send back. Of course, being the 60s, only very few people had a working video camera, and almost none of them knew about my little business. So, well, business wasn't exactly booming. I did get a great deal of Polaroid pictures, though, and some of them was really funny. But I don't have them anymore. They were all wiped out in the Great Sarajevo Cave Fire of '67. As the years passed, I eventually upgraded to a cavern in Himalaya, where I lived as a monk for the next 15 years, tending alpacas and growing mushrooms, you know, all that kind of stuff. And naturally, that gave me an amazing idea. So I packed up my collection of Transformer toys and hoffed it all the way back to San Mateo, California in 2005, where I invented the personas Chad Hurley, Steve Chin, and Jawed Karim. These aren't actually real people. They're just real, lifelike drawings that I created while I was being taught mimicry by the monks. So with these new fake personas, I started YouTube back in 2005 because I wanted to save the world's whale population. Then 10 years passed, the whale population was saved, as you of course know, and I had finally time enough to get in on that thing called YouTube. So on February 23rd, 2015, I uploaded my first video to the Game Cave, and you all know the rest. So let's take another question from one of my loyal weasels. How come do we have Northern Lights in Iceland and how is it made? Okay, let me just stop you right there, buddy. First of all, it's not only Iceland who has the Northern Lights, okay? It's also Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Russia, Canada, China, Japan, New Zealand, Poland, Switzerland, Spain, Holland, the Kiwi Island, Minnesota, Perth, and Texas. But not Finland. They're too busy trying to learn their own language to notice anything in the skies anyways. As to how it's made, it's actually a very interesting story. Back in the 40s, when I was just a young weasel. Okay, I, I just gotta stop right here and show you guys something. I was trying to find a good picture of myself as a young weasel, and I came across all of these hilarious products. I'm so gonna buy all of these when I someday foster an offspring of the Weasley persuasion. But back to the story. In the 40s, when I was a young weasel, I actually worked as a busboy in the cafeteria at NASA. And there I became chummy with a certain Herr Braun, whose first name shall remain a secret, who led me in on the, a little known secret that the Air Force and the Space Center actually already visited space in the 20s. So, not in the 60s, but in the 20s. And not only that, they encountered loads and loads of extraterrestrial beings just outside our atmosphere. They were just waiting for us out there. They didn't want to come into our atmosphere because it makes them gassy, of course. A two-decade-long battle commenced after that, where brave men and women from Earth fought the aliens, but the governments of the world couldn't just let everyone know about that, that would create panic. So they entered a treaty with the aliens that stated that all battles were to take place near the North and South Poles only, where there were less people to see it. But of course, that wasn't gonna be enough. So they wrapped the entire atmosphere in clear plastic cellophane, so that whenever a laser beam was fired in space, it would look like a dancing stream of light in the sky. And then they made up some ridiculous story about that light coming from broken off magnetic plasma fields from the sun that create solar storms coming toward the Earth with up to 8 million kilometers per hour, hitting the Earth's magnetic fields and breaking up into gases that enter our atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, like that's even a thing. Thank you for watching Let's Ask the Weasel. I hope you all learned something. If you did learn something, please share this video with all your friends so that they might learn something too. 
Or as an alternative, you can hit the like button under this video and don't forget to click subscribe so that you can be the first among your friends each week to impress all around you with your ever increasing knowledge. And of course, the comment section is open for all the questions that keep you up at night. Just put it in a comment and I will try to work it into next week's video. We will see each other again next Sunday. And in the meantime, remember, if you don't know the answer, ask the weasel.